Hi, thanks for coming. Let's move on to energy graphs. As usual, I will start off with the KE graph. At the extreme positions, the oscillations come to a rest. So the KE has got to be zero at the extreme positions. At the equilibrium position, the oscillation is at its maximum speed. And so these are three points that lie on our graph. How are we going to join up these three points? Turns out it's going to be an inverted quadratic graph. We actually know the exact formula for the KE graph. Remember, KE is half mv square. So half m v square. So square this term, we are going to get omega square. And the square is going to uh, remove the square root. So it's going to be just x naught square minus x square. Instantly, we recognize this to be the maximum Ke, which is, of course, equals to the total energy of the oscillation. The maximum Ke occurs uh, at the equilibrium position when x goes to 0. So that's the maximum Ke, which is equals to the total energy of the oscillation. So the total energy is, again, a horizontal line because it's a constant and we know that it's actually equals to half m omega square x naught square. If we take the total energy minus away the ke, what we get is of course the potential energy. So the Potential energy graph is clearly a quadratic curve. And its formula, its equation, is even simpler. It's simply half m omega square x square. Remember, the summation of these two should give you half m omega square x naught square. OK, uh, something to watch out for. If you're asked to sketch the, the, these two graphs, make sure that um, they are mirror images of each other. And since they are mirror images, when they intersect, they should intersect at the halfway point here. Right? You intersect at the halfway point here. And that happens actually at um, x naught divided by square root of 2. Also, make sure the graph you draw looks quadratic, huh? meaning um, at half the amplitude, you should get one quarter the energy because that's what a quadratic curve is all about. Okay, that's all. Ta-ta!